So, uh, okay, so let's, um, for a minute, let's just think about the history of the relationship between music and technology, right? Music and technology have a certain kind of historical uh, relationship. This is important because uh, the word remix is originally uh, associated with uh, music, Right, And obviously, if you were to talk to or to hear from scholars who are interested in texts, as in like literary texts, like maybe people who are interested in uh, slash fiction, you know, slash fiction where, say, um, you know, uh, Spock and Captain Kirk or Snape and Harry Potter are in a romantic liaison of some kind, uh, people who are interested in that kind of uh, textual uh, sort of remix uh, practices or people who are interested in film and are interested in you know vidding stuff like that like the Edward um, Edward and uh, and Buffy thing people who are interested in those kinds of things they will tell you really kind of slightly different stories about what remix kind of means in relation to their kind of textual form right but the word uh, remix originally refers to practices around music right so one of the things that's kind of important to think about and to have our heads around if we're going to think about why what, you know what are we supposed to make of uh, this idea of of remix uh, is to think actually about in the long run uh, the history of the relationship between music and technology right and um, so a couple of things first off is like okay so what is a technology anyway right so aren't uh, you know musical instruments their kind of technologies right or if you think about, um, you know, notation, notation systems are kind of technologies, aren't they? Or, uh, you know, notation systems impose certain kinds of meanings on sound, right? That's what they do. So uh, they seem to be sort of technological in some kind of aspect. Uh, but really what I'm going to try to, what I'd like to zero in on is actually uh, technology as a uh, distributive form, right? So uh, this is a little bit tricky and it's a little bit hard to kind of hold these distinctions, but just for, for, uh, for present uh, purposes, let's say um, that in the, uh, say over the last, say, 100 or 130 years, uh, we can think about the history of technology as a recording technology and a distributive technology and the impact that that had on music, right? And if you were to think of the standard words that you use today to describe music, so for instance, you might talk about an album, you might say, maybe I should go and get that album, or you might talk about a single, I think people sometimes still talk about singles, uh, that, that terminology is completely derived from its, as it were, artifacts. The words that we have to describe music are artifacts of the technologies of their distribution, right? So an album used to be literally an album, which is to say it was a kind of weird kind of cardboard box thing with sort of folders in it with uh, discs in, right? And that was, uh, that was an album. That was before you could fit everything onto one disc, right? And um, there are all kinds of uh, things which are kind of built into music in the shapes that we understand it as having now, which are artifacts of technological development and of the technological form. So uh, just as an example of this prior to the 20th century, I think it's certain genres of, of, uh, of opera, like Viennese, uh, Viennese music, where the duration of the pieces of music is uh, determined or was determined originally by the maximum uh, like burn length of a candle at the time at which the music was written, right? So if you were going to have a piece of music, you would, you know, and you were going to perform it publicly, you would put it on in some place where you would, I mean, this is before electricity, right? So you would be burning candles so people could see what was going on. And the, just before the candles went out was when the piece of music would terminate so that the audience would go out and people would run and change the candles for the performance of the next section of the piece of music, 
right? So and pe so people think, oh, you know, this is a high art. This is this music is a, an art form or something. It's like, yeah, sure, okay. But the length of the piece of music is determined by some technology. In this instance, candles, right? Or if you were to think about the three-minute pop tune, right? The th the three-minute tune, you know, a tune that is effectively between three and five minutes, sometimes a little bit less, sometimes a little bit more, but generally pop music is in three minute uh, chunks. Uh, that is completely a function of modes of technological distribution, right? That's completely and exclusively uh, to do with that, right? There are also aspects of the sound of particular genres of music, which are also to do with uh, t uh, basically certain kinds of technological affordances, right? So there was a period of time during the 1950s, 1960s, 1970s, when music was being recorded so that it would sound good on a car stereo, right? That was where most people were hearing music. So uh, the kind of the way in which music sounded uh, the way in which it was recorded shifted to try to capture that, right? And actually, like, the more that you look at it, the more you look into it, there's actually very little which is to do with the kind of history of uh, particularly Western, but not exclusively Western, uh, popular music over the course of the 20th century, which is not in some way impacted on by technology and by recording technology and distributive technologies, right? So, for instance, the idea of the crooner, right, or the idea of the singer-songwriter, the idea of a uh, singer who is able to use their voice in a certain kind of way so that when you hear it, you go, wow, it just sounds like they're, sounds like they're in the room with me. It sounds like they're whispering in my ear. Uh, that idea, uh, you know, people had to learn how to use microphones to do that. Right? That was a thing that had to be uh, a certain kind of a set of uh, corporeal or embodied skills uh, had to be kind of developed uh, to, to, to do that. Right? So, you know, like the, the length of pieces of music, uh, the, the way the pieces of music uh, sound, um, all of these things are really tethered to, uh, to technologies and to, um, to, to the means of their... Uh, the means particularly of their recording and of their distribution, right? Uh, or so, for instance, another example, obviously, which is kind of huge, is when music becomes amplified, right? When people start amplifying guitar in Chicago in the 1940s and the 1950s to make uh, blues, to, to, to produce blues, uh, which is amplified so that it can be heard in quite noisy uh, pubs or bars. Because uh, that's when basically kind of rock and roll sort of gets uh, invented is with this uh, with this innovation, right? So uh, technologies are embedded in the production of music, and they are embedded in the way in which music sounds, and it actually kind of can't be otherwise. It's kind of hard for us to to think of uh, worlds or ways in which it could be. Um, different.